Let's do this. Um, hello. It is I, Mer Mama. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back. So in today's video, I wanted to come on here and give you guys a tutorial. I know, pre-recorded content from moi. Who would have thought that that was gonna happen? I'm recording this a little bit differently than I normally do. It's not the full production, but I think that the camera quality and everything is looking pretty good. I'm recording this on my phone. This is in 4K, by the way, or at least it should be. It better be for as much as I paid for this phone. I've got my coffee right here. My hair right now looks atrocious. So therefore we have it back. It's up in a cute little headband. Fall is on the way, so I am all prepared for it and my body is ready. It has been so freaking hot here in the Twin Cities and I'm just ready for summer to be over. Anywho, what we're talking about in today's video is the Noremi eyeshadow palette right here. Um, I'm just going to do a straight up tutorial, but if you want swatches and really good pictures of it, it's on my Instagram. I have that link down below. Also, everything that I'm going to put on my face in this video will be linked down below as well with an affiliate link. So if you want to support me, support my channel, um, and help my community grow here, please feel free to shop through my links if you want to buy anything. If not, that's totally fine. I appreciate you being here nevertheless. If you are new here, hi, I'm Danny. I am a makeup lover, makeup junkie, and transgender mermaid goddess. Yes. I don't record and upload content very often. I've been doing a lot more lives recently than I have been pre-recorded content, but I have things in the works. I have things that I want to do and um, I'm taking it easy and not trying to force myself to do too, too much because I do work full time still. Feel free to subscribe. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, feel free to share it with your friends and yeah. We're gonna dive into everything. Uh, so Narimi, from what I know via my friend Danny, who I went live with the other night, uh, this is a Chinese indie makeup brand and they do limited releases of all of their palettes. So my friend Danny found this palette on a Chinese marketplace that's kind of like Amazon and it's called Taobao, T-A-O-B-A-O. -A -A There's a whole slew of things on there by the way. It's just like she told me about this website and it like opened up a whole entire new world for me and I have been really into looking on there for things. I placed one of my first orders um, five days ago uh, through a second party shopping agent called Parcel Up. And um, Parcel Up basically orders the things locally for you. They ship it to the, one of their warehouses and then they ship it to you. So it's kind of pricey, but the products on Taobao for the most part are really inexpensive. They also have Chinese food A on there. And if you know me, you know I love Fude. So, anywho, that's a little bit of background about how I came to acquire this palette. My friend Danny sent it to me. So I wanted to come on here, recreate this look uh, that I did the other night on the live and show you guys how I did it because I think I've gotten a few inquiries about that. I've got my coffee, I'm ready to go. And my mirror, which I'm gonna try my best not to have like right in front of my face the whole entire time, <laughs> like block you guys. I just realized too that I haven't put on eyebrows and I've not primed my eyes. So I need to do that really, really quick. Going in with the ColourPop Precision Brow Pencil. This one is in the shade Brunette. By the way, I have a whole entire tutorial um, of how I like to do my brows from start to finish. 
and I will link it up over in the corner up here if you want to go watch it. I think I'm covering the, covering the viewable area, so I'm going to try and use my mirror that I'm looking at right now. So brows are looking okay. I'm probably gonna go and conceal around the edges of them really quick. And that part you don't really need to see. So when I come back, um, my primer base and my eyebrows will be done. So BRB. And voila, eyebrows are on. Um, yeah, my eyebrows take forever and a day to do but I really like how they come out. So, let's see, it's kind of distracting because I, I have messages and things coming in on this phone, so I'm always like, ooh. <laughs> so, I laid down my eyeshadow primer, which is the Revlon Candid Concealer. I think that this thing recently got a packaging update. So it's called something else, it looks a little different but I think it's the same formulation. And I have been using this literally for years as an eyeshadow base and I love it because underneath the eye, it doesn't really crease. So on the eyelid, it's a tackier base, but it really doesn't move that much. And it's also hydrating and infused with antioxidants. So I like that and there's caffeine in it. And who doesn't like that? So let's dive in to this palette. This is what the inside looks like. As you can see, it is really grungy, perfect for fall. And as you can see, also my ring light is elevated by a roll of paper towels and a Canon camera box. <laughs> anyway, here's the palette. It's really beautiful. It has a lot of multi-chromes on it. So Chomper right here is a multi-chrome. Um, I haven't really played with this one or this one, but I think these are more chunkier metallics. They may have a flip to them. This one right here, which is Joe, is probably one of the most beautiful shades I've ever seen in my life. No lie, it's gorgeous. And then this one at the very end, which is called Wabino, is that traditional like, VR is extraterrestrial-esque, purpley, burgundy, pink flip with a green, and it is really smooth. The texture of all of these eyeshadows, especially the um, shimmers in this palette, are really creamy, really smooth. They pick up really well with the brush. They also pick up really well with your finger. The mattes aren't like super powdery. You will have like a little bit of kick up. They're definitely not dry. So if you don't like dry matte shadows, you might like this palette if you can get your hands on it. Um, P.S. Let me know if you would like me to, I don't know, give you a tutorial on how to order off of Taobao because I might do that because we don't gatekeep products over here, y'all. So I can definitely let you in on how I ordered uh, the palettes that I'm waiting on right now and to see, I'll have to wait and see if this service is a good service. Um, I know that they just shipped my items to me because they received them a couple days ago um, or like yesterday. And I'm gonna wait and see how everything turns out before I feel confident, like recommending the service. The first brush that I'm going to use is the rougher number 13, if I can find it. Uh, here it is. This is one of my favorite like natural hair blending brushes. It's super tiny. I know that rougher right now is having a really great sale. 
if you buy one one brush you can get a second brush of equal or lesser value for free so it's basically buy one get one and i will have that link down below with an affiliate link too but to start out last night i took the shade poison right here on the very end and this is a beautiful deeper tealy green and i'm going to start by stamping this just on the outer third of the lid and I usually just start to bring it in. And as you can see, this has incredible pigmentation. Like this is a palette that you really only need to dip into very lightly to get a lot of saturation on your brush. So when you place that color, that's what that should look like. I'm going to wipe this off on a microfiber cloth, which I just have like a lot of these on hand. I bought these like in a pack at Walgreens. So I just take it, wipe off the brush just to clean it. You wanna do this delicately, especially with your natural hair bristle brushes because you know, the bristles can break if you're a little too aggressive with it but the microfiber cloth is really soft. So next up, we're gonna go into the shade Quiz, Q-U-I-S. It's like we, but with a Q. <laughs> and this is a insanely beautiful jewel tone, uh, deep purple matte. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did on this side, but just over here on this side. So yeah, I'm just applying it the same way as I put that green on, but just on the other side. And as you get closer to the middle, wherever that is for you, um, just make sure that you have those two blended together really nicely. Just, you know, windshield wiper motion should do you, should do you fine. So, wiping off that brush again, we are going to next pick up the shade. I think what I did was in the inner corner above the crease, I put this shade, which is Anik. And this is a beautiful, like, lavendery blue gray matte. So, I blended out the purple with that last night. And then on the outer part above that tealy green i'm going to put this shade and this shade is kiss and it is a super vibrant like acidy matte green so starting with enic we're going to blend that edge out of the deeper purple and i'm trying to use the same brush I have a tendency to use so many <laughs> brushes during a tutorial. And as you can see, that blends in really nicely with that deeper purple. If you want to, you can go back into the deeper purple, which is Quiz. And just blend upward with that into the lavendery color wiped off my brush again and now i'm going into that vibrant green which is kiss and this is going to go above the deeper green to blend that guy out like that and as you can see, like using smaller brushes is really beneficial for you to get that delicate, like precise blend um, and to really see all of the colors still, despite the fact that they're all blended kind of together. Me personally, I like to put a lot of depth on the outer part because I feel like for my eye shape in particular, that really accentuates it makes it it makes it look its most beautiful, essentially. Everyone's eye shape is different, so 
you know, kind of base that off of what your eye shape is and what you feel looks the best on you, but you can still do these same colors. You know, if you have like a smaller eye, you may want to keep the darker shades a little bit closer into the crease um, than not. But me, I like, to, I like a blown out eye. Like I like it to be really carried up and it's just my thing. I love it. Next up, I am going to dip into a little bit of MAC Blanc type. So for me, I was describing this to somebody the other day at work, like a lighter tone matte nude on your skin tone um, is really beneficial to use as kind of like a magic eraser and to help blend out the edges of any colorful shadow because then it gives something like neutral for it to blend into so it almost like makes it look more even more well blended. I'm just going to take Blanc type and really delicately blend underneath the brow but also just blend the edges of these greens out. And it just attributes an even more beautiful blend to the final result. And you're just like barely touching the skin and wiggling around with that color. So whatever color you have that is around your own skin tone, use it in the same way. A lot of times too, I'll use it to brighten up my inner corner. I'll do that right now for you. Um, to brighten up my inner corner because my eyes kind of go inward, really far inward. There's not that much space between them, but also they're kind of deeper set on the inside part. So I use something like this to really pull that forward um, and also like using this will help the edges of this purple. Not that the shadows don't blend on their own, they do for days. As you can see, there is a little bit of kick up in the pan, so I do want to make note of that. I personally am not bothered by it, but I know some people are, and that is okay if that is something that bugs you. Um, I am going to take just a little bit more quease and pack it, you know, more on the inner third here. So after all that work is done, you should be in this spot right here. I'm going to go catch this eye up really quick. I'll be right back. All right, and both sides are pretty much at the same place. The blends are looking really nice. Uh, so now we're going to dip into a few of the shimmers in this palette. So for the look that I created last night, I used a mixture of Chomper and Joe. And like I said, Joe is one of the shades in this palette that really makes it, like for me, super special. I'm gonna do something a little different that I did not do last night, and that is put a glitter glue on. I've noticed as I've started to get a little older that shadows tend to want to crease on me really a lot. <laughs> I'm going to take another favorite from Refer of mine. This is the 21 brush, which is very comparable to the MAC 242S. They're very, very similar. This one's synthetic. This one, I forget what kind of hair is in this. I think it's... It might be, it might be horse, horse or weasel or something like that, but it's a really thin profile on this brush. It's perfect for doing kind of like a cut crease, but with um, your glitter glue or concealer. But I'm just gonna put the tiniest bit on each side. That's what I've noticed too. If I put too much of the NYX glitter glue on, that's when it tends to go a little haywire too. It's kind of like the idea of having too much of a good thing, you know? <laughs> and then I'm just gonna pat that glue in place. 
If you feel comfortable doing this part with your finger, by all means, use your fingers. There is no wrong way or right way to put on your own makeup if you're just doing it on yourself. So whatever means that you have available to you, you do you. Okay, and then I'm going to use that same brush that has a little bit of the glue left on it, and we're gonna go into Chomper right here. And this has the most interesting, I was describing it last night as being kind of like that same shade in the Tammy Tanuka Snake Palette, except more vibrant and bright and more like day glow of a color. So I'm just gonna pick it up on the rougher 21. See what I mean? So, 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 so beautiful. And then we're going to pack it on. Oh, I am in multi-chrome eyeshadow heaven right now. It's just so stunning. Okay, so I'm taking it about that far in. So a little past the center of the lid. And then we are going to put Joe on the remaining part with the same brush. This shade is beyond. I literally can't. I've never seen anything as strikingly beautiful as the shade. And it just goes on and it looks incredible. Like in person, there is just so much more depth and dimension to this one shade than this camera is doing. Or my other camera would do justice. And there is a slight flaky quality to this one shade, but it is not flaky to the point of getting everywhere and being unusable. I like flaky shades, but within reason, you know? I don't want it to go all over the place. I want it to go on my eyeballs. <laughs> and the Refer 21 really does a good job of making sure that it's going exactly where you want it to. So that is the shade. Look at the shifts. Like, the shifts are killing me. They're so beautiful. Okay, so moving on to the lower lash line, what I did last night was I took, I believe I took poison again and did that on the outer part, kind of bringing it into the center again. And then I also took Wabino and I put it all the way in. And I'm going to jump over to a different brush. This is by Sigma. It's their E31 and it's a dome shaped like smaller blender. It would be a really good option if you're like vegan and you don't want to use brushes that are made from animal hair. Um, it would be a good option to the refer number 13, but it's a little smaller. It leans a little bit more on the pencil brush side rather than like a tiny fluffy blender. So you'll get more of um, a compacted precision blend from the sky versus the number 13. Uh, if you want something that you can also fluff out a color with and diffuse a little bit more easily like a natural hairbrush, uh, the Katie Jane Hughes and Spectrum number 13 is also a really good option. But all of these brushes from this uh, Katie Jane Hughes set come with other brushes. They don't, unfortunately, they don't have singles. I really wish that they did. Um, so anyway, taking the deeper green poison shade and we're gonna put it right here. And as you can see, I can control the pigment and where it goes. I, find that really refreshing about really uh, super rich with pigment and color matte eyeshadows um, that you can just place this where you want it, softly blend the edge of it if you want to, and you're good. And then using another favorite of mine from Refer, this is the 03 brush. 
It is a smaller format pencil brush, so to compare it to something else, this is the Sigma E30 pencil brush, so it's a little tinier than that. The rougher is natural hair, the Sigma is synthetic. Um, I'm going to use that to put on the last shade in the Narimi palette, which is Wabino. And this is that traditional, well, is it traditional? <laughs> that uh, purpley pink multi-chrome that changes to greeny gold. So I'm going to reserve that for the rest of my lower lash line and bring it in to the center. And that took no time to do. No time at all. And it looks really well done. If I do say so myself. Don't worry about being too worried <laughs> about how the under eye looks right now. When you go in with concealer and powder, you can really blend out the edges of that. Next up, I'm going to take a different brush. This one was gifted to me also by Danny, and this is the Monet. I don't know if that's the right way or not, but this is the Monet brush from a brand that I totally forgot the name of. But I don't think that you can get these anymore because the owner of the brand was in Russia. However, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of moving pieces happening right now. So I don't know if this whole brush line is still available or not, but I wanna use it to give my girl Danny a shout out and thank her. She is the unofficial official sponsor of this video. <laughs> Um, and last night I put, oh, that's really bright. I put the shade Dominic, which is this beautiful sea foamy, tealy blue aqua shade. I put that right in my inner corner as a highlight. And it really gave the look something unexpected. And as always, I'm going to carry this up the underneath side of my eyebrow. It's something I always do and I really, really love it. And that's it, you guys, as far as the placement of the shadows, how I like to blend them, the brushes that I like to use. Um, and it's not just with this palette, it's with a numerous, a numerous amount of palettes that I have in my collection. This is just how I usually go about putting on my eyeshadow and the brushes that I like to use. So I'm gonna go off camera, complete the makeup, and then I'll come back and show you what everything looks like and maybe give you a little bit of a synopsis about how I feel about the Narimi palette. This isn't a review, it's just me putting on the shadows. I just wanna get on the makeup, play, and like show you what I create. And if you have an appreciation for that, definitely give us a thumbs up. Anyway, bye. I'll be right back. All right, you guys. And here we are with the final look on. I am going to walk you through all the other things that are on my face. Uh, so after I went off camera, I put on my primer, which is the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I have a little guy of this, but... This is one of my favorites, and I honestly think I'm probably going to pick up one of those jumbo ones because I really have been enjoying this. It's just a tried and true for me. So that's my primer. Uh, and then I went in over top of that with the e.l.f. Uh, Halo Glow Liquid Filter. This is a glow booster for radiant skin. And I mattified the crap out of my skin, but you can still tell, well, there's highlighter, but... I don't have any highlighter on my forehead, and this just really has blown my mind. It sits so well on the skin. It gives such a radiant, fresh, effortless glow to the skin, and there's so many different ways that you can use this one product. Um, I haven't tried the Charlotte Tilbury filter thing that everyone raves about, but 
Having tried this, I know that I'm probably never going to purchase the Charlotte Tilbury one uh, because this one is just so good and it's only $14. Then over top of that, I have my favorite foundation of all time, which is the Physician's Formula, the Healthy Foundation, and I am in the shade LN4. This one, I don't know if you can get anymore, but it is just a beautiful foundation for, you know, more maturing skin. Uh, it's infused with hyaluronic acid. I think there's antioxidants in here as well. And there's an SPF of 20. My SPF expired last year in May. <laughs> so I only use this um, mostly for camera, but I will occasionally wear it out, but, you know, I'll put a stronger SPF underneath of it since the SPF and this is no longer, like, as good as it used to be when it was new. And then I set my face with one of my favorite powders of the moment, the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation in the shade Fair 150C. This honestly is so reminiscent of MAC Studio Fix Powder, and I know this comes in a crap load of shades, so if you like a powder foundation that will mattify the skin and yet not look cakey or heavy, and I mind you, I really packed it on with my Sigma uh, F85 Airbrush Kabuki Brush. This is one of my favorite brushes for powder. So I really packed on the powder and it still looks super smooth, really just well blended. And underneath the eye, I have my uh, Revlon Candid Concealer. I just put a little bit more underneath the eye before putting the powder on. Uh, bronzer is Hoola by Benefit. Cookie as my highlight, just on the high parts of my face. Um, I went in with one of my favorite blushes from MAC. This is Cheeky Bits. It is an extra dimension blush, and it also gives a nice, radiant, healthy glow to the skin. I love this whole entire line of blushes. I have pretty much most of them. Uh, freckles are the ColourPop Brow Pen, Feather Effect Brow Pen. And this one is in medium brown, so that's what I put my freckles on with. And in my waterline, I have the Danessa Myricks uh, Morganite Multi-Chrome Eye Pencil. And I really like it in the waterline. It's been staying, staying put for the most part in my waterline. Uh, this one has a really beautiful semi-transparent base to it, but it shines green, it shines gold, it shines pink. It's kind of an eyeliner version of that shade Joe in the Narimi palette. So it has kind of a similar shift. It's in that same family, um, but it wears really nicely in the waterline for me. Then lips, BFF lip liner from ColourPop, a tried and true. And I went in just towards the center and kind of feathered it out um, with the June Bug liquid lipstick from the Juno Birch and Trixie Mattel um, or Trixie Cosmetics collection. Pretty much it. Oh, uh, Chantecai. I'm trying to blow through this. The Chantecai Faux Sils Longest Lash Mascara as my mascara. I'm not wearing any lashes, but for the live last night, if you tuned in, I had the Ardell Naked Lashes in 429 on, and I think that's it. <laughs> that's everything that's on my face. So all in all, I really like this palette. It's honestly probably one of the best palettes I've tried so far this year, and the quality and performance of all of the shades is just really great. Um, it went on really nicely, blended effortlessly. The mattes blended really well too. Um, the shimmers are really impactful. They're not super wet um, or spongy or putty-like. They're kind of a mix. They feel definitely like a cream, you know, when you pick them up with your finger or a brush. 
for the most part, they go on and they stay in place for me. So I really like the formula of the shimmers in this palette. Uh, the mattes are really creamy, uh, a touch on the powdery side, but they don't look dry on the skin. And yeah, I'm a huge fan. I am thinking about buying a backup of this palette just because I know the color story and everything is like totally me in an eyeshadow palette. Uh, so this is kind of like a quintessential <laughs> palette of mine. And I love this look. It's totally giving me like Banjo-Kazooie, Gruntilda vibes, and I'm totally here for it. Leave me a comment down below if you understood that reference, and if you did, points to you. But that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this, like, run-through of how I created this look. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Also, let me know if you like the setup of this video if you don't mind it being recorded on my phone. Um, I thought I would try something different and if you have been wondering what the noise is in the background, it is my air conditioner. We're still unfortunately in summer. I'm a very fall, winter kind of person, so we're approaching my time of the year. Anyway, I um, hope you are all doing well. Hope this finds you well. Subscribe, like, Leave me some love in the comment section and I will see you in my next video. Bye. And then I'm gonna. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, 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 blah.